I'm sure a lot of people want to know why I love being a performer. I enjoy making people happy. And I was born with that gift, the ability to make other people happy just by putting myself in front of them. And so I almost feel obligated to provide myself to others. Trina Vega is the older and less mature sister of Tori Vega. Through the show's run, Trina is always trying to be the center of attention. Whether it's her throwing herself at directors in the hopes that they'll put her in movies, singing very loudly in front of music producers hoping that they'll give her a record deal, or boasting about how great she is at everything, despite her obvious lack of training in certain areas. But why does Trina want to be the center of attention so badly? What trials and tribulations trick Trina into a trivial chase for clout? Truthfully, tracking Trina's triggers is a lot more troublesome than one might think. So, let's take a look. I do! I hear you're directing the new Johnny Depp movie and guess what? I'd be perfect! Here's my headshot! On the surface, she may seem like a spoiled brat, but upon closer inspection, it's easy to see where this attitude comes from. Rad or not, Trina works hard at what she does, and is extremely dedicated to creating her own art, even if the end result is a bit... Chicago! Chicago! Eccentric. Remember that practice doesn't make perfect. Practice makes permanent. If someone practices something the wrong way repeatedly, it's still wrong, no matter how good they are at doing it wrong. Whether or not people want to acknowledge it, the truth is, Trina has talent, just not in the areas she thinks. In Hell and Back Again, we discovered that she initially got into Hollywood arts because Psychowitz was high on coconut milk during her less than stellar singing audition. When she asked to re-audition for their new principal, Trina decides to sing, and it goes horribly. Ultimately, the only reason Trina ends up staying at Hollywood Arts is because she quote-unquote saves Helen from a mugger with her martial arts skills, which raises a few questions. If Hollywood Arts is an art school, could Trina have auditioned with martial arts? What if someone's talent was something like cooking? Would they have to cook right in front of Helen? Or would they just not even be a student at Hollywood Arts at all? Do they only accept actors, singers, dancers, and musicians? Anyway, the point is, had Trina focused less on what she thinks she's great at, and instead focused more on what she is great at, maybe she wouldn't be considered talentless by so many people. Trina is shown to be quite proficient in acting, when she's not chewing the scenery. Dancing, depending on the episode, and martial arts. More specifically, the Vietnamese martial art known as Vovinam. We know this because of the gi she wears, which, by the way, includes a yellow belt, which is the equivalent of a black belt in other martial arts, meaning Trina isn't just a novice at fighting. Despite this, Trina doesn't want to be known for it. But why? I'm sure a lot of people want to know why I love being a performer. I enjoy making people happy. And I was born with that gift, the ability to make other people happy, just by putting myself in front of them. Though her reasoning may seem quite egotistic, suppose for a moment that Trina is being genuine in her desire to make people happy. It would make some sense once you consider how unhappy people make her. Trina's thirst for the spotlight could be more than just a cry for attention. Deep down, Trina may just want the validation she never receives. Humility and discipline are integral to martial arts, so she probably wouldn't get the attention she wants by boasting about how great she is at it. So what better way to finally get some recognition than by singing, dancing, and acting? I mean, after all, that's what her school is all about, right? You wanna sit with us? No. <laughs> What's up, A-listers? What's up? Unlike the rest of the main cast of Victorious, Trina is a senior at Hollywood Arts. Despite this, she hangs out with her little sister's group of friends, mostly because a lot of the people at the school don't really like Trina. And boy, do they love telling her that. 
my uncle's pickup, hook it up to my RV. We could all hit the beach. Let's do it. Oh, that sounds awesome. Cool. Yeah, let's go to the beach. I am so in. No, 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 no. no. Oh, Stay oh, away. I can't wait. Whoa, 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 whoa. No one likes you. I don't know why they didn't ask me to sing the national anthem. I do. Me too. I get it. Terrible city, city, not a bitch. Oh, shut up. Why did you invite me here? We did. You invited us. Like you. No one likes you. When you pair this with a few videos on the slap. <sighs> this is an open letter to a guy named Kevin Richards. I typed this myself. <laughs> See, I was set up on a blind date with Kevin last weekend, and since then he hasn't responded to any of my attempts to contact him. So, here we go. Dear Kevin, it's me, Trina. First off, thank you for meeting me at the Olive Grove for dinner last Saturday night. <laughs> However, I do not understand what happened. As you'll remember, we were seated at our table and I began telling you about myself. Three minutes later, you excused yourself, claiming that you had to visit the restroom. For the next half hour, I waited patiently for you to return, which you did not do. Concerned, I asked a waiter to take me to the men's room and you were not in there. But oddly, the window in the men's room had been left open. Or... So... Last week, I posted a video of me singing a song that I wrote myself, and at the end of the video, I encouraged people to leave comments. So, now, this is an open letter to all the people who left comments about the song that I wrote and sang, the song that came from my heart. The first one says, Gross! You're the worst! Dude, my dog sings better than you, and he's been dead for three years. How'd you learn to sing like that? Did a monster truck run over your throat? Just listen to your song. Now my ears are bleeding. Thanks for making my ears bleed. And, and, and then it says something really, really very, very rude. Thanks for the vicious cruelty. And to the one person who wrote the sort of nice comment about me, which had nothing to do with my singing. Thank you. But no, I won't. It's easy to see that people openly bully her and no one stops them. It's amazing that Trina isn't depressed, or maybe she is and her behavior is her way of kicking back at all the negative comments. It's fun to ask the question, is Trina bratty because no one likes her or does no one like her because she's bratty? Regardless, at least Trina can count on her little sister to stand up for her, right? Oh, hey, did you talk to your friends about Yerba? Yeah. I think we're all going. Good! You're taking Trina. No. Yes. You are taking Trina. Not happening. We'll buy you a car. Any car you want. You don't even have to bring her back. Trina's home life sucks. I mean, seriously. Early on in the show, her parents demonstrate that they do love her, but as the show progresses, they become pretty vocal about how they really feel about her. You'd think that having negligent parents would help her and her sister create a helpful and loving bond, but... Speaking of which, let's talk about Tori for a second. We all know that she got into Hollywood arts by performing for her sister. Why and how Tori already knew all of Trina's choreography and the song lyrics is anyone's guess. Trina is happy for her sister getting into the school. Cool. Then Tori starts to become more popular than her, even being able to make friends that Trina never could. That's fine, after all, they are two different people. Trina then tries to join Tori's friend group. Everyone insults her, and what does Tori do? Nothing. This happens a lot throughout the show, Tori's kind of a jerk towards Trina, and I know a lot of people will say that Trina deserves it for how she treats Tori. An episode that's commonly brought up when criticizing Trina is the episode called The Birth Week Song. So, I'm going to do the unthinkable. I'm going to defend Trina. For those of you who've never seen the episode, or don't remember the episode, it's the one where Trina is having her birth week. She thinks having a birthday is not enough time to celebrate, so she has a birth week. Look, I never said she was perfect. 
After having a hard time thinking of what gift to get Trina, Tori ends up buying her Pizzini boots, only to later discover that Trina already bought a pair. I can see how some would see that as Trina being impulsive or impatient, but suppose the reason Trina bought them for herself was because she genuinely didn't think anyone else would. Anyway, Andre comes up with the idea to write a song for Trina. Tori agrees, and Andre does most of the writing. Tori performs the song and a well-choreographed live show for Trina. Trina's response? Happy birthday, Trina! Thanks! So where's my present? Are you kidding me? No, where's my birthday present? The song was your present. How much did it cost? It didn't cost money. Then it's not a present. Oh, you are unbelievable. I'm not the one who didn't get her sister a present for her birth week. I wrote a song for you. I rehearsed it with people. I performed it for you. Yes, yes, yes. I know her definition of a present is incredibly shallow, but hear me out. Ever since Tori started attending Hollywood Arts, she has always been one-upping Trina. Tori's a better dancer, singer, and she's even better at making friends. So why on earth would Trina want a gift that once again shows how much better her little sister is at everything Trina wants to be good at? Along with this, I'd like to add that Andre wrote most of the song, not Tori. I'm not saying that writing a song for someone is a bad gift. I'm just saying that in Trina's case, it probably would have been easier to just buy her a hat. Like she does after selling the song which is also a pretty low blow from Trina, maybe I shouldn't be defending her. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Even though Trina can at times be a pretty bad sister, she clearly does love and care about her sister Tori. Two big examples of this being in Freak the Freak Out, where she warns Tori about Ryder Daniels, and in Locked Up, where she is genuinely concerned about Tori going to prison. And how does Tori show her love to Trina? You were off-key. No, I wasn't. Yeah, you were totally off-key. No, I wasn't. Was I? Oh, yeah. During which part? All of it. Well, then you can't post that on your profile on the slap. No, I think I'm gonna. No! Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm gonna. Tori, you can't embarrass me. I'm by... kidding! Promise? Yes, I won't post this video on the slap. You swear you won't? No one will ever see this video. Okay. Trina Vega isn't a terrible person. I think the way she acts is because of all the negativity and criticism she receives, especially when that criticism isn't really constructive and more like insults. She probably wants to be a performer to make others happy because she herself isn't. Her constant desire for attention likely comes from a lack of love at home and at school. All right. This video ended up being longer than I expected it to be, but I'm sure some of you will appreciate the deeper analysis. This was originally going to be a joint video discussing both Tori and Trina, but after writing just Trina's part, I realized I had a lot to say about her. Which means I'll have to talk about Tori next. My goodness, the amount of hate Tori gets is pretty crazy. But is it all justified? We'll see. Until then, I'll leave you with this. Trina's locker is covered in spoons. At first glance, it may seem like something that she lazily threw together at the last minute, but no, they were all put together in a specific way. Spoons are used to eat and feed. Maybe her locker represents her hunger for the spotlight. Some of the spoons look dirty, so maybe it's addressing how being vulgar and obscene seems to be what sells best. Or maybe the balance of dark spoons and light spoons mean that she's willing to do bad things in order to get what she wants. Doing dark things to get a chance at the spotlight. Trina wants to feed the world with her talent, no matter how many eggs she has to crack. <laughs>